I've clicked onto the Global Tropical RB for January the 14th, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the plot takes pressure on mine alone, and when making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look towards your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we're going to be focusing only on Cyclone Bilal once again today. The system is continuing to intensify, and there is very high confidence in a rapid intensification event, and we are looking, unfortunately, at a very powerful cyclone that may approach La Reunion and Mauritius over the next couple of days. So the system right now is doing pretty well for itself. Last night, we talked about how the system was entering the classic curved band phase, that being a large curved band of convection that you can also see now wrapping around into the center. Now, this pattern has continued to evolve since my last video about a day ago, and now we have a central that's overcast or a CDO. That's basically an area of thunderstorms that sustain and surround themselves around the eye. We now have that being built. And over the course of the nighttime hours, we've continued to see from microwave imagery that the eye is being built and we are nearing completion of that. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually completing it right now. What you can see right now is we have this large burst of convection on what appears to be the northwestern side of the eye. This is where the eye was open on the last microwave pass, and I could show you that here. You can see here's all that convection wrapping around, and it was open on the northwest side, and the center was here. So it looks like that burst of convection is closing it off, and once that eye closes off, there's not much that's really going to stop that. There is a little bit of shear right now. You can see in the low levels, we have some weak northerly flow pushing the storm to the south. And just above that, we've got a little bit stronger northerly flow here in the mid levels. Now, this has caused a little bit of a tilt with height of the vortex. You can see this is a low level microwave imagery. And if I outline the circle there, and then go to where the eye is in the mid-levels, there does appear to be somewhat of a tilt with height here. But this tilt is not great. You can see they're still fairly close together, and over the course of the day, the system has intensified pretty steadily. The storm right now is a cyclone, as of the current estimate from Mateo France, about 65 knot winds, or 75 mile per hour winds, in 10 minutes sustained winds. Uh, that's about 75 knots or 85 miles per hour uh, in one minute sustained winds. And that has been continu continuing to intensify throughout the day. It's been a very steady increase over the, uh, the nighttime hours. And the environment has gotten more favorable over the nighttime hours. If you remember in the video last night, I touched on that there was an upper ridge nosing in here from the west over Madagascar, and this was bringing some southerly flow blocking the outflow layer. So you can see last night there was the outflow layer was pretty much, I guess, held back here just south of La Reunion and Mauritius. But now that ridge has been eroded. There's been a trough digging in way down south off your screen. And you can see now the ridge is over here in Madagascar and over the Mozambique Channel. And now at the base of that trough, we have a lot of westerly winds streaming across your screen. And now the outflow that was once restricted is now able to push south because the ridge is no longer pushing it north and it's able to meet up with this flow and is now expanding away from the storm. And really, once we saw this outflow uh, channel open up, that's when we started to see the system really start to take advantage of the environment, take advantage of the warm oceanic temperatures and start to develop that eye. Now, we also talked about when the system was developing the potential for a dual outflow channel. You can see we have this first one here to the south, but if you pay attention to the eastern part, we have cloud elements moving in a counterclockwise or anticyclonic manner east of the storm. And this is getting a northerly outflow channel on the north side of the storm. So you have two outflow channels now for the system. And what this means is this is a pretty low shear environment. We don't have winds streaming across the screen like they are down here right over the storm. The system more has all this upper level cirrus expanding away from it, in indicative of a very favorable environment. And unfortunately, this has led to pretty high odds of rapid intensification. And as you can see this in some of the rapid intensification guidance, I know this is 
sort of weird to bring up just randomly, just a bunch of numbers, but stay with me. You can see a lot of, of high probabilities here of significant increases in wind, and these winds are in knots at the top. And you can see we have an 80% chance of, an eight, of a 25 knot increase in the next day and 76% chance of a 30 or 35 knot increase in the next 24 hours. Now that may not sound like much, but keep in mind, like I said, the current analysis of the system is 75 knots in one minute sustained winds from Mateo, France. That's about 85 miles per hour. If you get this 30 or even 35 knot increase in the next 24 hours, you've got a major cyclone on your hands, and that's very powerful. And that's not even the end of these probabilities. We've even got high odds, very significant odds, of 40 or 45 knot increases in the next 24 or 36 hours. And the likelihood of rapid intensification here is very high. And this is a very real threat here. And the forecast right now are looking to call for a very strong storm to come through here. Perhaps the strongest we've had in, you know, very close to these islands in a very long time. I looked at some of the older storms that have come through this region. The closest one that was of similar strength of potentially when it comes through was Friday of last year. But that came north of the islands into Madagascar. Batsarai a couple years ago was a similar strength. And it also did the same thing. It, it stayed north of these islands and went right into Madagascar. So it's been a while since we've had a storm like this. And the unfortunate part of this is that nothing is really there to stop it from intensifying rapidly. And you can see the intensity here on the HAFS model, bringing the system into a major equivalent on the Sapper Simpson scale with winds of about 110 or 115 knots. Uh, for those who are familiar with the Sapper Simpson scale, that is a category four on the scale, low end, but it is category four. And the Sapper Simpson scale goes from one to five. So you're nearly at the top of the scale as the system comes into La Reunion. Now, in terms of the track today, we talked about yesterday how there was still a bit of uncertainty on exactly where the system was going to go into La Reunion or Mauritius. Today, we've seen more guidance get into more of a consensus on a landfall or at least very close brush with La Reunion. You can see that here. The HASP model takes it directly in there. And the GFS also agrees taking uh, the system right into La Reunion. Now, importantly for Mauritius, this does not mean... Just because the consensus today is right into La Reunion, that does not mean that you are completely out of the realm of possibility for a direct hit. For an example, this is a European model, and this operational run has the system coming right through Mauritius on its run, and that could still be of significant strength when it comes through your area. The door is still open, but the chance today has decreased a little bit. Uh, I'd say... The more likely scenario is definitely a track closer to La Reunion. Just to note, the European, uh, the this this operational run is differing from its ensemble mean. The ensemble mean is more similar to the halves and the GFS. Uh, but either way, even if the system does come south, you're still looking at the potential of significant impacts in Mauritius. You can see the tropical storm force wind field here is expanding far enough north to bring tropical storm force winds on this run into Mauritius, and that could cause power edges, could cause uh, a lot of um, trees to come down, and it could cause some structural damage. Alongside that, we'll still likely see some rainfall here, and rainfall could be significant, especially if it does, say, brush or La Reunion on the, no, excuse me, on the northern side. That could allow some of the stronger wind and potentially more moisture to get into the island of Mauritius. Or La Reunion. Unfortunately, this track does mean that you are likely to get into the cyclone force wind field, and now there is a growing and significant chance of extreme winds here to come through the island. Uh, and we're also looking at potential for very significant storm surge. When the system is sitting here, just an example, you have strong onshore flow right onto the northern end of this island. That could also cause a lot of water rises along the region. And storm surge is one of the most dangerous impacts there is uh, in a tropical cyclone. Alongside that, this also increases the potential for heavy rainfall. This is the HAFS model 
showing the uh, precipitation throughout the next few days. And you can see as the storm tracks through there, the model shows about 400 or 500 millimeters of rainfall across the island. And unfortunately, there's a lot of high topography across the island. And that could cause some flooding and mudslides across the region. Now, this is the forecast that come from Mateo, France. And you can see their track following the model consensus today, having a track right through La Reunion. But again, I will urge those in Mauritius not to take your guard down completely. You can see this red area here. This is exactly where the storm could track. It, well, it, it's where the storm could track in in any scenario it could track further north towards you it could even pass south of la reunion uh, but that potential is still there for direct impacts but la reunion the most likely scenario today unfortunately is direct is a direct hit for you and the timing for this we are looking at a landfall likely early monday so in the next day or a little bit more than a day we're looking at landfall of this system they may have some time today to finish up some preparations. Your preparations should be complete, but if you have some that you still need to rush to completion, you might still have some time. There are some outer bands, so stay tuned to local uh, weather offices and local emergency management. Uh, so you stay at alert of when these bands are coming in and also for what you need to do in the final hours before the storm arrives. But... Preparations this morning should be rushed to completion if they are not complete. And after that, you need to hunker down and uh, prepare to go through the storm uh, as this system will be passing through, like I said, in the next day or a little more than a day. Now, this is the forecast cone with the wind fields. You can see the wind field of significant size. Tropical storm force winds starting tonight across La Reunion. For Mauritius, we're looking more for... Uh, early tomorrow morning when these more gusty winds arrive on the northern end of the storm. And you can see as it makes landfall, the cyclone force wind field is directly over uh, La Reunion, and there will also be very strong winds, extreme winds, associated with that core when it comes in. Now, in terms of watches and warnings, as of the video, and I'm going to reload this to see if we do have any other warnings in place, uh, I think might still be the same. Yeah, so we still have an orange cyclone alert for La Reunion. I imagine this will be going into red at some point soon as the system is now about a day out. For Mauritius, you have a class one cyclone warning in, a, in place and that will likely go a little bit higher. I imagine class two, it may go higher if the storm does deviate a little bit further north on this forecast and you could get potentially into the 50 knot or cyclone force wind field there. And I will leave links to this page here for the interactive cone for Mateo France, the watch and warning map for La Reunion, and the uh, warning bulletin for Mateo Madi or not Madagascar, Ma uh, Mauritius Meteorological Services at the top of the description so you can click on that and get it in your language and exactly the most recent information. This will be changing shortly after the video does come out. Finally, I want to show you some of the wave heights that could be associated with the system as it does come through. You can see the red area here is about six or sorry, four meters. The purple area is about six meters in height. And that could be uh, just battering these islands for hours and hours and hours as the system comes through here. And that could cause some flooding along the coastline and potentially some beach erosion. That's a lot going on with a storm. Again, in La Reunion preparation should be rush to completion today, this morning. And once that happens, look towards your local emergency management as they're going to have the best information for what you need to do to hunker down for this system. That's again, we are about a day or a little bit more out from the landfall of what could be a powerful, perhaps even historic cyclone coming through your region. I will leave links to all the uh, maps here that I've shown of the forecast cone, the watches and warnings here at the top of the description. So you can click on that, get it in your language and get the most recent information. And I will have a video out uh, tomorrow when the system is about to make landfall. And I may have another video out in the early or latter half of the night time hours uh, tonight 
if there's anything too significant to report on, uh, if the system does rapidly intensify, perhaps even exceeding expectations of what we have right now. But stay safe in Mauritius and Law Reunion. And again, preparations need to be rushed to completion. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.